Hello and welcome to part 4 of Drupal Crash Course video series. So uh, today we are going to uh, switch gears a little bit. The last two videos we have been uh, trying to do module development but the video before that we were configuring, setting up Drupal, installing lots of modules and configuring them and doing site building. So in this video we are going to uh, switch gears back to site building because I want to show you how to use some advanced modules to create some really advanced functionality without any coding whatsoever. So let's see how that is done. So what are we going to do? What we are going to do is, um, let me demo it first. So hold on. Okay, so what we are going to do is this store locator. So if I imagine uh, all these um, companies, they have lots of locations, business locations. So they need to give a feature to their um, website visitors where, so for example, in this case, there is a company with 500 locations, let's say, right? And the users, the visitors of the web, so this page is showing all 500 locations, which is kind of not realistic, but okay. And then somebody says that I am in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, 19090 is the um, zip code and they say I want to find all business locations within 100 miles of that zip code and they hit apply and that produces look it produces all the locations it says that you have 104 locations and it produces the markers for those locations okay it doesn't look like 104 markers but I'm not sure why that is in any case here you have 104 of them and each one is a business name and an address and then the distance from the given uh, the centroid of the zip code that we gave which is 19090 on the other hand if I change the postal code to Jacksonville's 32256 postal code with 100 miles I get four markers and four um, business listings so that's kind of a smaller number if I increase the distance from 100 to 200 and hit apply and now I have according to the output there are 20 locations and I am going to probably see 20 of them yes I think and the reason why I, I think I see fewer markers than uh, 20 I believe it's it could be because it's uh, some of these markers are duplicates or, or of each other and then finally, when you click on the marker, it shows you information about a link to the to the business, and then the address and distance is 97.26 miles. So it's showing the miles distance also. All this uh, seems pretty interesting and advanced. And um, when you think about all that goes into making this happen, you will realize that this is even more complex than you you might initially think. The fact that you have 500 businesses and you need to import them all is another aspect and then uh, geocoding you you have an address but on what latitude and longitude that address falls is another piece of complexity and then how do you get the same view to do listing of the business as well as show it on the map that's another piece of complexity so there are a lot of very complex pieces involved in this but the fortunate the good news is all of that is implementable without any coding. Let us get started to see how that happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically drop this Drupal site completely and uh, delete everything in the site. So let's do that. I am bringing up my terminal. Oops. Yeah. So in the terminal I cd to my Drupal uh, site directory. Uh, even before I do that, I, the, my site is located in this site directory called location map. Okay, and well, the only way to be sure that it's gone is to delete it completely. So here we go. I am deleting the entire location map directory. And uh, now I recreate it from scratch by running drush site install. So I say drush site install db URL is um, 
username root password nothing localhost and then the name of the database is d7 underscore local location map and the site directory name is location map and then the site name is going to be location space map so this is drush command line i hope you use drush if you don't you must it is a huge productivity enhancer so that's why uh, make sure you use drush from here on download drush install it use it for everything you do so with just that one command line i have a complete website i did not even have to go through the um, so i just go to the host and there you go welcome to location map an empty site I log in and there is nothing in the site it's a complete uh, version install all right so let's go to location map directory and we will start installing uh, modules piece by piece but first let me make uh, run dr my favorite shortcuts drush shortcut calls en uh, disable some modules that I don't particularly enjoy and then enable some modules that I like. I have set up my Drush so that it automatically downloads new modules as they are needed and um, as I start enabling them. Okay, so this didn't work. It's failing because I don't have a directory structure created. So I have to make the current directory writable. The site install process made the current writable uh, read only rather. And then I create a bunch of uh, directories I am creating as you can see modules contrib, modules custom, modules features, scripts, libraries, themes and also a uh, files is already created so one thing I have to do is change the owner recursively of the files directory to www data okay the user so this is the user owner and this is after that is the group owner uh, of the file directory. So once I do that, now if I enable good modules again, disable bad ones, and so it has it has disabled the bad ones, and now it is enabling. First, it downloads the good ones, and then enables them. Okay. So at this point, if I refresh my site, I have a different menu, uh, admin menu, which is good, and in modules I have the module filter installed. All right, so the first thing I have to do is uh, create the content type. So let's add a new content type called business um, business location. Okay, business location. It's in my history. It looks like, and uh, we will give it a name, location name, I guess. And um, I don't think it needs to be promoted to front page, but it does need to be published and every time we change it I guess it's good to create new revisions display settings I don't think author and date information makes sense for a business and then I don't think it makes sense to have many menu for the businesses save and add fields and as we are at, so business by default has a name business location has a name and body but the one thing that we want to add pretty badly to this is an address so that's the that's the whole point of this uh, demo or a tutorial to be able to add addresses so for that we need the location module so here's the thing press dl location and uh, there is a problem I want to tell you right away that this location version that I have installed has a serious bug in it and we will fix that bug uh, once we once I show you what the bug is so keep in mind that you should not actually download location but you should be downloading um, really the 7.x-3.x-dev dash 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 version but I want to show you the the bug first okay so here we go we got a location uh, module what does location module do let's enable it first Location module allows you to add address fields and then also geocode them. And it's a very useful module. Let me uh, go. So now once I have enabled the location module and if I refresh it, I, 
I do not get a new field called location here at all. No new field type. The reason is there is another module within that location group of um, modules called location CCK. This is the module that actually makes it possible to add custom fields that are of type location. So once I did that, I refresh this page and I got this location field type. And I'm going to give the name of the field will be location and I save it. As I save it, uh, we are saying what are we collecting? We do uh, collect, allow everything to be supplied, postal code and everything. So let's, we said yes to everything, location name, whatever they want to specify in terms of the address. And then what do we want to hide? I think the the lat long co coordinates, ma Google Maps link, the country name, because we are going to be displaying country code. And then province name again, because we are going to display state province. These should be hidden. So let's save and save these field settings. And uh, if you want to specify any defaults, so here the country is already United States is given as default, which works for me because I'm in the United States. But if you are in a different place, you might want a different default. All right, so save these settings. At this point, you can start. Uh, okay, by the way, this this one, this locations, this is from the location module, not from location CCK. This we can ignore for now. Um, I am not even sure how to use it. So let's ignore it. This is the one, this custom field that I've added is the one that I am going to uh, populate. So at this point I can say add content business location and I can give it a name um, a description body and um, the, the location name which could be so and so building and this street address and street address part 2 and so on and so forth and latitude longitude can be in entered by the user but we will not do it that way. So in order to first be able to um, generate the latitude and longitude we need to do some things let's go to the configuration okay well let me first show you you know let's say test business one okay body is body line one body line two whatever it doesn't matter i'm just typing this up mm, and then give it a location um blah location name street let's just say um, I guess we will say one two three main street okay uh, Jacksonville Florida um, three two oh well let's let them figure out the that and if I now save this, you got the location and everything. But if you go back to editing it, you will not see the geocoded latitude and longitude. So that's our next order of business. We want to make sure that these latitude and longitude are computed, calculated by the system. How do we achieve that? For that, we have to install the GMAP module okay so configuration if you go to configuration um, geocoding options you see here's the problem geocoding fails miserably this is the bug that I was talking about a second back that you should not be installing um, downloading the location module but version 7.x-3.x dash dev version that's the the version you should be installing so let's download that version and when I do that we'll see it should hopefully yeah it says the location already ex exists do you want to overwrite it yes I do want to overwrite it because of this this error that occurs this error goes away in the dev version so which I and I overwrote that so now when I click on the geocoding options tab no error that's the reason why we have to get the dev version all right so let's find united states in this list 
and I'm going to say use Google Maps for United States okay so th remember how did I get here I got here by saying configuration content authoring location geocoding options okay so save the configuration but we are not done after we enable United States to use Google Maps we still we still have to do something which is configure the parameters the one thing that we have to give is in order for geocoding to work so that when you enter an address it automatically computes the latitude and longitude you have to supply it with a Google geocoding API key which you can obtain by going to console.developers.google.com and create a project you have to create a project which I have already created you just hit create project once you create the project you have to click on the APIs and in API you say map API and there is the geocoding API you would have to enable this which in my case is already enabled once you do that you click on credentials and create a new public API access key and when I did that I finally obtained this API key so once I got this API key I can paste it here and let's see delay between outgoing geocoding request is zero and then the accuracy level is county is good enough let's save configuration all right great so now we have um, geocoding setup let's see if this works I hit edit again right and then if I hit save hopefully I don't really know but maybe it will geocode this no it didn't it didn't geocode anything so hmm let's change this the address okay let's say suite 4 <laughs> for the sake of alright let's see and I edit it again and look at that look at that isn't that great so this is the system computed the coordinates for us okay because I updated the address this is excellent so what let's go over this again we basically installed the location module right so here's the location module all the various things in it and then we enabled the location CCK to add a custom field and then we went into the configuration of location module which is in content authoring location and uh, we went to geocoding options enabled United States for Google Maps and then configured the parameters so that we can enter an API key which we created on console.developers.google.com okay all right so at this point whenever we enter an address it will get geocoded automatically so next we have to import 500 such businesses so we have created a single um, a single business let's create let's delete this one and import 500 businesses so to f what I will do is I will search for a some online list of sample addresses okay so sample address list CSV let's say and I I got I, yeah I found this one called at Brian Brian Dunning, Dunning dot com has a, has sample data and I basically found these 500 records I will include a link to this site and where to download or you can just just Google for sample address CSV find Brian Dunning and then download this one free one which is for US 500 records that works for us so I have already downloaded let me just show you what it looks like I go to my downloads so there is that US 500 zip I unzipped it and I got the CSV file so let's look at the CSV file and the CSV file simply contains uh, but first name last name of the business owner I guess this is the company name address city county state etc 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 now in order to, to import the CSV file I have to 
first create a feeds importer so what is the feed feeds importer first of all what is the feeds module so if you go to drupal projects feeds okay so drupal.org slash project slash feeds uh, you can read what it does it's a very a good module that basically allows you to import uh, and create nodes and other entities nodes users and uh, taxonomy terms um, etc from xml files or xml urls or csv files and urls etc so uh, let's uh, let's see how this works let's in download feeds let me download that, that in a rush dl feeds let's enable it right away and then feeds ui oops sorry i forgot to say enable So feeds is downloading C tools for because it needs that. And once you do that, you will see so in structure part of your website, you get feeds importers. So this is structure feeds importer and we hit add importer. And now we will call our importer. What should we call it? Let's see. So let's call our feeds importer business location csv importer right that's a decent name for it i guess and the system generates a machine name for it and uh, let's keep going let's give it a description i don't know what should we call it sorry um, import business location nodes from records in csv file and remember we have the csv file right here that we are we are going to record these no uh, um, these rows from the csv file as nodes business location nodes let's create it so this is all this will serve as a mini tutorial for the feeds import process um, so you create you have the name you have description you will i think it's better to use attach a, um, a standalone form you could attach it to the business location if you wanted the node uh, node form but i think it's better this way no periodic import because you will import it when you need um, but it does have support for periodic import and now import and submission yeah that makes sense rather than scheduling it for future and then process in background let's not let's just keep uh, keep it in foreground and hit save fetcher now it can fetch from a local file or over http we will do local file save then once we upload the file what type of files it should allow uploading and where should it be stored that's fine take the defaults parser parser this is syndication parser but now we want a csv file parser so it save there select csv and within csv parser what should be the del del delimiter comma is fine no headers no we do have headers so let's keep leave it unchecked then processor our processor will be can be can generate nodes taxonomy terms or users ours is node which is fine next settings what type of node what bundle should it use and business location is the type of node we want to create if we import the same thing over and over again should we um, update existing nodes or replace or i think update is the best let's keep update um text format by default if there was formatted text should we use filtered plain text or full i'll just go with filtered although i don't have any formatted text at all leave the author as anonymous or we can make it admin if you want okay and then authorize make sure that the admin author has um the permissions to create such nodes and then whether to expire nodes i would say never never is fine say so at this point the only thing left to do is doing the mapping the mapping between the csv file columns right and the the 
node columns, node fields in this feed importer. So let's start doing that. Copy this company name column from the CSV file, paste it here, and then map it to the name or the title of the node. Okay, so let's see title there. You save that. And then you also make it the unique target so that if the same company name is attempted, uh, if you try to uh, import it again, it will just up update the same record rather than creating a new one. So that's useful. Next, in our spreadsheet, we have a bunch of other things, the CSV file. We'll ignore the first and last name, but there is address, this whole thing, uh, zip and everything. Uh, that's what we want to import. But as you can see, we don't have any option to import the address fields. The reason why is because we neither the location module nor the feeds module comes with support for each other. Fortunately, there is a there is a bridge module called location feeds. Let me show you that brush. Uh, it's called location feeds or feeds location, one of them. Yeah, location feeds. This module, it basically bridges the gap between locations and feeds. So let's download, enable all that in one shot. So once you download and enable location feeds and you go back to your feed import screen, if I just Right now, there isn't any such option. If I refresh it, suddenly I have got all these fields that I can import. So let's start importing them one by one. Um, address line. So this is the address line which we map to street location. city will be mapped to the city in the location CCK city county we can ignore county let's import state to state code state and province yeah that makes sense then zip obviously important and that would map to postal code. Okay, with that, I think we have done the imp the feeds importer. Now, once again, as a recap, we created a new feeds importer. We made sure that it um, it's a standalone form, doesn't run periodically, but then it fetches the uh, a file which has been uploaded and parses it as a CSV file. And then after that, it uses the node processor to do the importing. And um, most importantly, we have the correct mappings. In, a, in order for the address field, the location address field, to get imported from the CSV file, right? we had to enable this um, new module called location underscore fields. fields. Okay, Let's see if this works. We go to um home page and add here's the import this is the import um link this is our feeds importer so pay attention to the url here sometimes it's hard to find it so you go to import and then click on the feed and now we upload the file and the file is us500.csv this is the file, let's import it. Now, you will re see that this will take a very long time. And there is a very good reason why it takes a long time. Because it is making uh, several API calls to Google, Google's geocoding API. So if I look at the content listing, so these are all be getting imported as you can see. But it's taking longer than 
uh, what a typical um, import would take. So this is running. I hope it's still running. Um, so we have how many nodes here? This is two pages worth. If I reload, this is page two. Okay, I am not sure if I. Hopefully that will that that continues. But if I go back to the feeds, import this, importing twenty percent complete. So that's good. So it's probably still running. I am hoping that it is running. Yeah, it's saying importing, and then it's running. Mm, we'll see. We'll come back to it. Let it import. So now we have a whole bunch of um, nodes of type business location. What we'll do next is create a view, a view that lists them all. Okay. So let's say. That, oh, we have to first install views module, right? So brush minus y en views, and since we are going to be creating views, let's interactively so we have to enable views underscore UI so views UI allows us to interactively create views so once you do that and then you go to structure you get views and now you can create your own views so let us add a new view And we will call our view uh, business locations, I guess, something simple. Okay. And um, we will get, we'll be showing content in, in it of type business location. We are not really tagging anything. We can leave it unsorted because we, our sorting will be by distance, which we will come to next. And um, Let's see what else we should do. Um, the title of the page, maybe it should be called find a location. And then the, the path of the page is just locations. And we will create an unformatted list. I guess that's okay for now of fields, unformatted list of fields. And um, we will show, sure, 10 items maybe maybe more mm. yeah it's okay to show 10 items and then we will use a pager that's okay and everything seems right so let's continue and edit and now we are showing the titles of these businesses let's also add the address so we will which means we show the location um, field of business location apply that and um, we'll just call it address instead of location we'll call it address or or we can just omit omit the label let's skip the label apply to all displays save and we have look how many we got we got pretty good hmm? let's see how many uh, let's go back and look at the import and check how many are imported it was 20% done it's still 20% done so I think it may be stuck so what do we do hmm if I click on this one let me uh, if I say unlock let's unlock it because we have to unlock because, so then only we'll be able to continue uh, the import. So let's hit import one more time because I think I made the mistake of not letting it, I, I close the page. So this time I will let it finish. This will run it in its own tab while I am building the view here. So here, we have a nice little view here. Let's go to 
let's give it a menu menu entry normal menu entry and we will give it a title let's call it location finder and there's not much to describe so let's just say apply and save it so once we save it let me open this in a new tab and we have location finder here which basically lists all locations okay this is straightforward let's add some ajax to this so go to advanced and use ajax set it to yes so that when the pagination happens it happens without full page reload it uses ajax so now i reload and hit let's see all right let's click location finder and then hit next and it basically does that you know asynchronously as you can see that there all right so this is nice except that this is not showing any kind of a map what we want to see is a Google map of all these locations let's do that for that we need to install download and install a module called gmap and again since we are um, using rush it's as easy as saying rush minus y en gmap that simple okay so we now have gmap enabled once we have enabled gmap back in here oh look 90 percent done almost there back in here in the view we can add a new let's refresh it for, before we do anything i refresh this and now i can add an attachment i can i can add a new view of course or any other thing but i will attach a display of type attachment and i will give it a name called map so one is a let's call it map attachment and uh, in the format instead of unformatted list I have a new option now called gmap this is exactly what I want and be very careful I made this mistake too many times where I hit uh, apply to all displays and then I lose my page display so I have to say apply only to this attachment and override it only for this attachment this display apply to this display and now what do you want to do in it first thing I like to do is use the default uh, marker and uh, so this will create a map of and by the way this data source is important location module should be enabled that's very good it's already enabled and then yeah let's have bounce as an animation for the markers highlight marker for node argument auto click node argument uh, display tooltip yeah sure why not and that will show the title and display pop-up bubble when the marker is clicked yes let's do that also and apply it to this display let's save it oh one more thing now before we save it right now we have created an attachment that is not attached to anything so we need to attach this to the page so meaning to say show it when the page is shown and the attachment position is before which is also what we want great save this go back to okay by the way this import is done it created 400 nodes why only 400 and not 500 because it was already done 20 percent remember 100 nodes were already there so if you look at total number of nodes it's 500 imported nodes total good we can close this tab go back to location finder and now you've got a map uh, and here are all the markers in yes they are not 500 of them but I think it just shows a when they're too close it doesn't show all of them uh, and they're bouncing mm, the bouncing will, uh, can get a little bit annoying okay so let's uh, let's change that bouncing to um, something else just drop or no animation or something so the bounce let's just make make it drop 
okay save it so now if I click on location finder it doesn't show because it's it's off screen so this is one of the problems that you will face first is the location map is too small so let's go into the defaults of gmap so configuration web services gmap and in the default we will change the width to 100 percent you know that's a good width and then height will make at least 400 pixels so that it has a decent height then we can say there are a few things in the defaults what we should do one more thing is uh, you should control F and find auto zoom this is very useful extremely useful once you enable auto zoom and save configuration this is default for all so where in even for my view which is this one it will automatically be set I don't have to set it now when I go back to location finder did you see that first of all the map is much bigger and secondly uh, those it is auto zoomed to the part of the map that all these listings belong to so if I once again click on location finder there you go you see that drop animation very nice so I have got 500 hopefully let's see oh I don't see in the number of, of uh, locations let's change that we're going to the view let's do it in the in page view and add a header when you add a header it says what kind of things you want to add to the header I want to add a result summary and apply it to all displays and then displaying this to this of this many yeah that's a pretty decent thing to put it it'll tell you how many are total so let's apply save and now when you click on location finder you see displaying 1 to 10 of 500 and then displaying 1 to 10 of 10 <laughs> that's interesting it's showing only 10 because I have so there it, it is shown twice and I know why it's shown twice because each each display is showing its own set and here you see um, it's still this guy is still showing 1 to 10 and the next guy is showing 1 to 10 again still every time we paginate through it the page display is changing but the map display remains the same let's not worry about that uh, that is a problem but but won't be a problem once I start adding location filters so hold on for a second back here the problem is I don't want to see all 500 businesses I want to see only the businesses that are close to me or to the website visitor to the user so what we have to do is add a filter that will fit so let's go to the ma master display add a filter for distance if you go and search for distance filter and this is the beauty of the gmap module and views integration is so good that you basically apply you add a filter called distance and uh, make it either rectangular or circular we will make it circular and we will expose it as an as a form views exposed form so check that box and now you can say how, how much distance let's keep it 100 miles and here this is important what is what is the distance from where and from we will say the user enters the postal code and we assume default country which is US so they will enter a postal code and we will give that a default this is my postal code 32256 Jacksonville and then we will say we'll give it um, okay um, search within a given radius of the given zip code hmm? apply this to all displays and save it so when we do this let's see what happens 
location finder nice it has 32256 is the default anyways so and the distance is 100 kilometers and you see four four listed in here and four um, in the page display there are four and in the attachment also there are only four which is excellent if you go to a, a slightly more populated area like 19090 which is Willow Grove Pennsylvania you apply and it is still showing <laughs> this is the problem do, do you see the problem the page display is showing New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Maryland addresses which is more like closer to the zip code we gave but the gmap attachment display is showing still Jacksonville because it is inheriting only the default that, is, that can be fixed for a long time I was scratching my head why that is happening turns out you have to go to the attachment and say that it inherits the filters so you have to say inherit exposed filters which is set to no you have to say no 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 I want to inherit the exposed filters once you hit that you save it now look what happens location finder of course that is 32256 nothing new there but then when you change the zip code and apply that look the Google map also is now centered around Philadelphia and, and Willowbrook Pennsylvania area and there you have all the business listings below that we still have a problem I think it is still showing only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. yes it's showing 10 if I remove the pagination completely it says 10 items we could say well for this display okay wait, wait, wait. for this display only for this display display all items hold on this attachment apply to this display and then change this to display all items let's see what happens for this attachment if I go to page we still have 10 items save if I apply look I see far more so basically the Google map is showing everything while the page display is showing only 10 now you may say 10 is right maybe you want to increase it from 10 either way you have that option and now because we turned on the info window we are able to see the name of the business if we wanted to also see a, a few other things so let's let's see content location is being shown for page how about map yeah content location is also shown there not sure why it's not actually showing up in the um, let's add distance so we go to page and add distance to the field so here uh, I want to see how far it is from my center origin reference point apply to all displays and the distance should be in miles and it should be from the f from where so not users latitude but the filter there is a filter specified there use distance proximity filter and apply and continue now we will just say distance not distance proximity but just distance and let's display it save that gives you distance uh, let's see if this actually helps as you can see we now have distances mentioned and there is the address above the distance if I click on any info window I don't actually see the other information it is uh, linked to the node but it's not showing uh, 
the rest of the information. Let's see how to make that happen. Actually, we can go to the GMAP configuration. Let's see. If I go to the GMAP configuration. And one of the defaults we could say is the click behavior. And that is open info window becomes the click behavior. And yeah, that's once you do that, let's see what what if it makes any difference. Apply. Ah, so that helped quite a bit. I replaced that with open info window. Uh, I set that setting in GMAP defaults and now I see the address and the distance. Excellent. Excellent. Um, this helps me how far from the centroid I am. So if I go to some place closer to the 19090 address, the distance is 38 miles. If I go to Lancaster, the distance is 63 miles. If I go to, see, uh, this is some place in eh? California. Are you serious? That doesn't make sense, but okay, whatever. Mm. Now, New York, PA, right there, is 85 miles. 63 miles, 38. So yeah, this is getting closer and closer. Okay. So this is a big deal. I mean, think about how you achieved all this. Uh, you have you are able to specify a. Oh, by the way, you can decrease the distance. You say, okay, look only within 10 miles. And now we have much smaller set only four and all four are listed here and now the distance will be of course under 10 miles 4.62 4.49 and 6.35 then 7.54 which is the ma maximum so uh, the distance filter seems to be working and um, we have imported the business locations. So let's do a recap. Let me see if I'm, I'm actually missing some other feature that I wanted to show you. Oh yes, of course I am missing. Speaking of features, I do want to featureize, meaning to say package this configuration as a feature. That is uh, quite important. So let's uh, to package this so that somebody else can use it. Let us create a new feature to create features you have to enable download and enable the features module features module allows you to to take content types and variable settings and views and um, module dependencies and feed importers everything and package it all as a um, as a generated Drupal module and then you take it to another place and enable that Drupal module I'll show you so and then the same feature set becomes available so here I go to structure features and we will create a new feature so let's say create feature what should we call our feature let's see let's call it uh, find locations how about that find locations so this is a feature this is the machine name of the feature and then let's um, do we have a description not really and we have to make sure that we include all the correct so a feature basically you select all these content types and everything one thing that is missing is in its current form it will not include variable settings in a, and we want want that. So in order to include variable settings, we have to say drush minus y en strong arm. Strong arm is a Drupal module that allows variables to be packaged into features. So that's why we are enabling strong arm. 
So once I enable strong arm and then refresh this page, I should see strong arm in this area right there. You see that? So let's uh, do this again where we say find uh, locations as the name of my feature and I will include the starting with the content type business location yes of course and it has some of its own dependencies I will there might be others that we should probably include as a dependencies that may not be automatically detected like gmap for example uh, oh you know what wait let's wait for gmap because we can enable the view so there is a view business locations view and it might detect gmap but it did not so therefore well we have to enable gmap on our own hmm? so let's see where is gmap uh, I don't see gmap where did it go hmm. it was there now it's gone okay uh, if I look for gmap among dependencies there isn't anything very strange um, we'll add it we'll, we'll have to make sure that we add it oh it's already checked it's automatically checked that's why it didn't show up okay gmap is, is there and um, other dependencies let's see we want to yeah we want to have I'm surprised that location is not added so let's add location the reason why I'm adding location, location CCK is there, but I'm also adding location because the name of the project is location. Uh, we know that CCK depends on location, but it will not get downloaded automatically unless we do this. So let's do that. So we check the location module as a dependency. Then, other than this, the only important thing that we have to uh, include are the variable settings so we go to strong arm right and then look for any gmap related google map related variables you could include the api key i do not recommend that let's include gmap defaults settings and then uh, marker file etc doesn't matter so much but yeah default settings for gmap is, are very useful to have also in the location location module might have some location directory node location table user location table yeah none of these are of interest so that's it uh, let's now export this feature so there are many ways to export the features I could download the feature like this so when I download it it ends up on my disk but that's not what I want I want to uh, download it on the server so what we do is just give it a path to the server I rm minus rf I have an old copy sitting of find locations delete that okay and now I can say generate this feature in slash tmp why am I generating in slash tmp and not in my site directory because my site directory is fully controlled by me my own personal user id and not www dash data which is the user that this um, web server and the PHP process runs as. So let's generate the feature. Once you generate this feature, it has created, if you see, a module, a complete module called find locations in slash TMP. I can copy mine recursively from find locations in slash TMP to modules features. And now I have a feature sitting on my disk. If I go to structure features, there is the find location feature. I enable it. It should say that there is no difference between what you have on the disk. So yeah, it's in default state. Perfect. And if you look at the um, the parts components of the feature, as you can see, there's the view, and then there is the content type, and the field base. The content type is here and the field bases and field instances all those standard things are there so now let me show you the power of features I will basically create a, an empty site 
um, let's create a new site site install using trust site install and I will give it a new database and I will call it um, foo okay d7 foo and its subdirectory will be called foo and its um, its name we will call foo map so now we are doing site install and empty site and all this stuff and I press enter this will create the new directory with an empty database now I cd to my full directory and ls minus l I don't have the correct structure so let's fix that make the right directory writable change the owner and then make directory structure which is modules contrib custom modules everything right? copy that now if I say cp minus r slash tmp find locations to to this place mm, modules features find locations and if I simply enable let's do trash disable bad and trash enable good modules that will make the whole thing a little more little easier to manage remember this is a completely new site didn't exist a few seconds back in the meanwhile I do have to give a um, create a new host name sorry host in the ho host file I have to put a host mapping and I will just duplicate one of the previous ones so now local host dot d7 dot foo maps to the same local host right and now if I open this local host dot d7 dot foo I have a site I can log into the site so at this point there isn't anything uh, all the views etc don't exist but as soon as I enable the the feature module rush minus y en find locations this will uh, I have configured Drush so that it actually downloads the required modules to my modules contrib file within the site directory so it's doing exactly that so this is pretty useful because now you got in the location finder view the view of course is empty because there are no uh, business locations created so we have to do the import feed importing we go to modules we have enabled feeds module but we did not enable the I hope we enabled the feeds module and didn't miss it I think we did miss it let me check let me go back to yes we missed the feeds well we have to then fix that problem let's very quickly add feeds where are the feeds hmm no feeds here so let's add oh there it is <laughs> yeah that feed we completely missed so let's uh, fix that once again generate the feature in slash tmp after we check the feeds Oh, we also have to do add the dependency on feeds location. That is important. So add dependency on feeds and also add dependency on dependency on feeds location. Where is that? Yeah. Feed location feed or feed location. Yeah, there. Location feeds that. So once again, let's generate the feature one more time. And once we do that back in foo we can uh, rm minus rf our modules features find location and then copy it again 
and then drush minus y disable find locations then we'll re-enable it so that it downloads the other things that it needed so look it's downloading location feeds and feeds both excellent once it's done doing that in our foo and website let's go to the home page we will hopefully have an um, import link let's reload and there you have import link we go to the import well hmm. I don't see the feed importer that I was hoping to find why is it not there hmm. so I have a feeling that the reason why that didn't work very well is because we did not have the feeds earlier when we enabled the um, feature so let's go to the feature and and revert the feature or or we could just rebuild the whole site but well, let's uh, just revert the feature okay so let's uh, we could rebuild the whole site so brush minus uh, let's see site install again this time we are in the directory where the site is so we, we don't have to specify the site subdirectory and uh, we'll use the same DB we don't even have to specify the database URL because it is already in our settings.php so we just say site install okay and uh, rebuild the database from scratch and then we will enable the feature module hopefully okay operation not permitted oh that's fine so now if I look at my permissions and everything it looks good so now if I say drush minus y en find locations this feature is already present all the required dependency modules are already present so hopefully that will yep so it's there if I go to structure I have to log in first and uh, I, I got do I have feeds no I don't have feeds but if I go to home there is the import and the importer is still not there okay so there was uh, some problem with the way I generated the feature uh, once I regenerated the feature from the other uh, original site location map site back in here now in foo site also I see the business location CSV import so uh, I made a mistake while exporting the feature I re-exported the feature and brought it back in here it works fine so now I go in here and uh, I have the importer I once again import the CSV file that I had downloaded from the other site and hit import before I hit import, sorry, I should check that the that the Google Maps configuration is correct and location configuration is correct. So if I go to content authoring, location, geocoding option. If I click on that, boom, I get the same old error. If you remember, um, that's because I have the wrong version of location module. So I just do a drush minus y dl location 7.x-3-x-dev dash 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 dash. this is the version I should be using the dev version because of the bug in the current currently released version so let us um, update this and once we update the location module this error fatal error should go away Alright, so now that the module has been downloaded and we have the dev version of the module, let's uh, refresh the screen. And we have what we needed. 
The only th thing is that United States version. Yeah, there it is. Google Maps has to be enabled. So this part of the configuration is not automatic. It doesn't come in the feature. I'm not at least not the way I I package the feature. I go into configure parameters, then we put in the same API key, save configuration. Once we have done this, this is when I should go ahead and import the CSV file. If I had imported it before that, it would not do the geocoding automatically. With this, hopefully, it will work. So the very fact that this initializing is taking much, much longer, there is kind of a, an indication that it is probably going to uh, do the geocoding correctly. So I will not make the same mistake twice, and I will open a second tab with my site. If I go to content, yeah, I'm already seeing some being imported. If I click edit, and now I should see some geocoding information right there. Yes, excellent. So it's it's doing the geocoding. Very nice. So let it run, and once this is finished, I will have a complete website with with all the um, 500 business locations and the view and all the search capabilities. So let's uh, let's look at the view in the meanwhile. If I go to location finder. If I remove the postal code, just hit apply. So it's displaying 1 to 30 of 30. And the Google map <laughs> didn't show up. That's, that, I don't know why that is, but it could be because it uh, didn't have any place to center upon. I could just use my previous zip code that I was using. It might help. Okay, let's go back to location finder. Um, to within a zip code it's still blank so something is not quite right with Google Maps Gmap um, maybe I can clear cache no it's not working so let me check so this is a good way to, to check how to do troubleshooting. So the first place, whenever something like Google Maps doesn't work, the first place I think of is looking into the um, into the JavaScript console that, because there it is, unload map of undefined. So there is, gmap views is not happy. Something is wrong with gmap views. It's not happy about. that so what we should probably do is configuration we should go to gmap and save the configuration once take a look at what the current state of the configuration is um, the default width is 100 percent and a few other things are already there which is nice auto zoom, zoom is turned on sometimes it just helps to save the configuration and now if I go to Location finder and one nine zero nine zero still doesn't help, so I think I need to do a little more troubleshooting. All right, so I just um, spent some time on troubleshooting and I found that the problem was I had to disable use Ajax to false. And uh, so, what we now have to do is, uh, yeah, so once, once I disable use Ajax. Uh, things improved quite a bit and now we I see a whole bunch of um, locations uh, well the basic model of the story is you can package your configuration into features and then enable it elsewhere okay so let's uh, quickly have a f an overview of what we did we used feeds we first created a content type we used feeds to import 500 business locations then we used 
uh, or oh, before that we uh, created a custom uh, field called uh, using location and lo location CCK and then we import imported all that location information and the business locations using feeds then we created a view in the view we created a special um, special page and attachment map attachment using uh, gmap and uh, it lists the matching uh, businesses as well as uh, maps them okay and then we finally package the whole thing as a feature I hope you learned something uh, in the description of the video there will be a link which will give you all of this information in more detail um, in textual form as well so that you can try doing this on your own um, I think it's a uh, what I just showed today is fairly advanced functionality that uh, I think very few mature platforms like Drupal can support uh, there are a bunch of other content management systems that that cannot make the same claim be able to do this without any code thank you see you next time